Hello everyone and welcome to Heroes of Might and Valor. This is a D&D show filmed on Roll20. With us tonight we have a number of players. First up, Lucas and Green. Introduce yourself. My name is Lucas, but you've probably heard of me. A dragon trapped in the mortal constraints of a pitiful half-elf's body. I'm here to regain my uh, true form and ascend to the realm of the draconic kind. Or so they say. I'm totally a dragon. Edoc in the blue. Uh, Playing a fighter, just a man doing his thing. (laughs) Excellent. Corlette in the purple. Hi, I'm I'm Sven. I'll be playing the cleric here, investigating. Uh, I I believe you. I believe you had me investigate investigating a cult MVL of a dragon of some sort. Yes, it's up to you whether you wish to convey that information with your group or not. In the orange, Heron, who is currently experiencing technical difficulties, which is probably going to happen more than a few times. Whilst Kerry is trying to find, find his voice, I am the half mug Krieg. Half orc. The half orc, sorry. Yeah, not the half <laughs> uh, The half orc in the yellow Krieg, but that's enough introduction I feel we will begin. You guys have been sent, some of you are native of this town, some of you have been sent from the huge city of Darkadia, you have been escorting Stephen Blaze from Darkadia to Greenust from some official business concerning the treasury, of which some of you may know, some of you who are native may know that a large amount of goods, gems and precious material is stored in this town as it's a rather unsuspecting place to believe such things. Stephen Blaze is coming to do something about that. However, as you guys proceed to this area, it is very evident that something is not as you left it. For the past several days you've been travelling a road that winds lazily across the rolling grasslands with green fields. Sundown is approaching when you top a rise and see the town of Greenus just a few short miles away, but instead of the pleasant welcoming town you expected, you see columns of black smoke rising from burning buildings, running figures, that little more than dots in the distance and a dark winged shape wheeling low over the keep that rises above the centre of town. Venus has been attacked by a dragon. Um... It wasn't me. Skyrim. <laughs> Skyrim. <laughs> Stephen Blaze turns to you, I know not what you speak. We must hurry. I'll Kree. follow behind. Krieg says nothing, he just charges straight ahead. Yes, and as you do so, Krieg, you witness another sight. You pass by the house and without warning, Five humanoids dash out from between two buildings on your left. A limping man and three young children race across the street into more shadows. And a woman carrying a round shield and a broken spear turns to face in the direction from which they came. Kobolds stream out of the valley onto the family's heels and fan out around the woman who looks determined to delay the creatures as long as possible. Uh, so in which instance we have Three humanoid children who are running away currently. This woman has run out and her injured husband. And a number of kobolds dash out and they have begun to surround her. You may roll initiative. Uh, incidentally, Colette mutters a prayer to Pelor before this begins, because this looks hairy. So, Colette, seeing this happen, you are immediately on the offensive. A quick prayer to Pelor, and you swing to action. Indeed. Kobolds themselves are very lightly armoured. Most of them carry a dagger as their weapons, but they do seem to work very well in teams. As these cold kobolds swarm out, Colette uh, looks Grieg's way and says, You, you're going ahead, right? That was the plan. Good. She uh, casts Bless on you. Alrighty, so is that the end of the turn? Or? Yes, Lucas, it's your action. Seeing the blight of... Uh disgusting creatures run out. Uh, Lucas will be quick to act as he pulls out his loot. And he'll perform a slow, sort of peaceful lullaby as he casts sleep. He's going to centre it around just on top of the woman there. Yes, roll your hit dice. Immediately during the battle, Lucas starts to sing a soothing melody of restful sleep. That is very good. During which 
four of the near kobolds collapse onto the ground. Nice. Lucas will turn towards women and say, Fear not, fair lady, for Lucas is here. Make a uh, charisma check. Do I get advantage for being adorable? If anything, uh, combat would make your opposition less appealing. You kind of see that kind of sweat beating down her head and a kind of frantic demeanor kind of shifts slightly as her eyes connect to yours for just a moment. Her husband in the corner does kind of make some very blatant kind of angry noises, but he's in no condition. He's quite wounded to do anything about it. With the rest of my words, and I'll turn to him. And worry not, brave man. I will see you both safe. <laughs> uh, he is not impressed. <laughs> uh, I can't win them all, Lucas. Yet. Edok, your action. I've moved you up, Edok. Anything else you want to do? How much uh, space have I got left? You've got no movement, but you could throw a ranged weapon if you have one. Or you uh, could try and collect these children before they run off into the mist smoke. That's probably the more pragmatic option, I'll do that. Make a persuasion, or an intimidation, depending on how you want to run it. They're about a couple of seconds from just bolting off into surely what would be more combat down the road. I swear, only in d d would you consider, do I yell angrily at the fleeing children, or...? I know, sometimes it works. <laughs> and with well, that, I mean, they this stop did. immediately on their place. Hey, Holy you shit, don't want to run in there and get murdered by kobolds, do you? <laughs> Brutally in gris, like, just murdered, it'd be terrible. You stay here. <laughs> Karen, your action. I'll walk up and poke a kobold with a sword. Sorry, Karen. Your, uh, oh, you didn't quite have your weapon ready, and you miss terribly. It goes to them. At what point the children do turn and start to move towards your group, and Wise. so does the husband. The woman, however, goes to attack some of the kobolds. It is, however, futile. I'm just going to roll for the unconscious kobolds. None of them awaken. Oh, thank God. As it stands, two of the kobolds go to attack the woman. One of them uses his action to wake another kobold, and the one next to Karen attacks him. So, for Karen, uh, you are looking at a 15. You have been missed. The woman is critical. Oh, that's not good. Perhaps you should fear, lady. She immediately goes down as they oh. both of their attacks come into her. One of them practically slices her neck open, sending blood streaming across the ground. I guess we're acting a bit late. I'm gonna charge. Okay, so I'm gonna charge in and try and take out this one. Let's do 20 plus 3. Roll. Man, we're off to a good start today. The journey has been long and taxing, and you just can't find the energy to send a good blow towards your enemy. Hey, I'm just get a bonus action to try one more unarmed strike, and I'm going to take that charge down. Okay. <laughs> oh, <come Better. laughs> that is still a miss, unfortunately. Ah. Blinded by rage, rage and anger. Sven, you're up. I'm going to move forward and put more meat and armor between the kobolds and the civilians. I'll move just out of range, and I will hit one of them with sacred fire. I failed. <laughs> now we're talking. High rollers tonight. Yeah. Now we're not talking. <laughs> <laughs> Your flame comes in and it sears the kobold. It shrieks, still maintains its battle readiness. We now come over to Lucas once more. I say to them, bring it! They bark at you in some kind of draconic style, almost like a raptor-like sound. Is it draconic? It is draconic. What are they saying? It is a profanity. Glorious. <laughs> Uh, Lucas is going to move up a step between the children and the kobold pest. Uh, he is then going to shout some vicious mockery at the one that just finished off the 
pretty lady. Eleven. Uh, that is most definitely a fail. Sticks of the stones may break their bones, but words won't hurt kobolds. Uh. Well, it did damage. Uh, they take one damage, and he is now got a disadvantage. You look at him, and you curse towards him. And you can kind of see in his eyes, his head lowers slightly, and his shoulders drop. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas will take this time to brush his cloak out in a billowing fashion and declare, Oh look, both of your weapons are tiny. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Here it goes. Edok, your action. <laughs> Alright then, I think I'll uh, take this opportunity to move into some melee range and hopefully distract them from the more squishy uh, members. Uh, in that case, I will chuck you an inspirational word. What, what's D6. the word? You get 1d6. It's Shazam! <laughs> <laughs> with that Shazam Edok you <laughs> head straight forth into battle All right. standing on the dead woman she might not be dead <laughs> we can hope standing over her heroically as her blood actually squirted out in a cross pattern she's dead when yes. he stepped on her neck with his boots <laughs> I was applying pressure to the wound I didn't stand on her neck <laughs> <laughs> Trust Colette me, would uh, just like to remark that this is not accepted medical treatment. Metal cap boots just sink into the flesh. No, she's still good. It's fine. Don't worry about it. As a herbalist with uh, techniques in medicine, uh, Krieg would like to agree. <laughs> so I assume you're attacking Edok. I am. Um, hit and a very powerful hit. Having previously just been insulted, his guard dropped and you bury your blade into him. Get wrecked. Do the thing. Shazam! <laughs> <laughs> wow. It is nevertheless enough to take him down. That's what we're talking Shazam. about. <laughs> the blade comes in to the midsection and he collapses. Krieg, your action. I'm just going to attack this guy, just to keep him away from the cleric. That nice. is a Roll. Nice. Excellent. Um, you cave his face in with your punt. <laughs> I knew I was going to love your character, Jonan. <laughs> Bonus action. Your backhand comes in to hit the one beside <laughs> you. You may roll your damage. I am. You are already dead. <laughs> uh, uh. That's just enough. As you smash <laughs> his face, he collapses onto the ground. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful Brutal. having a half orc in the party? I doubt they're going to understand me, but as I'm just going to turn towards that last one and yell, "Come on!" You may make an intimidation. Can I, in turn, turn towards the children and try to calm them so they don't run off at the sight of the angry half orc? You have the gratuitous <laughs> violence. That's probably a good idea. I think orcs are getting advantage, so I'm rolling that again. <laughs> Uh, orcs don't get advantage for intimidation. Oh, okay, I thought that was what medicine presence was. Proficient with it. Oh, okay, never mind. In that case, uh, either way, I failed, so... It stands strong despite what's going on. The presence of a dragon, even in the far distance, inspires kobolds to worship dragons. So they stay and fight. Oh, damn it, and I'm here as well. <laughs> <laughs> or so they say. Aaron, your action. Skewer him. You miss, and you're... Off balance causes you to collapse onto the ground. You're now <laughs> staring up at the kobold, who suddenly seems to look a bit more confident in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh dear. In fact, at this point, Colette mutters, Oh, Pelor, save us. It then comes to them. There are three sleeping kobolds who remain asleep. Uh, one of them uses his action to awaken one of the kobolds. He then attempts to retreat. You may take a swipe at him, Edo. Come on, roll legendary. The one above you, <laughs> Karen, uh, attempts to take a swipe with advantage. A one and a three is not quite enough. Uh, he too attempts to escape. You may take an attack at disadvantage. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it is such a shame it's a disadvantage. Ah. Uh. 
<laughs> roll another 20. Nevertheless, that is still a hit. You may roll your damage. As he runs from the ground, you stab upwards. He collapses in trail of blood. <laughs> Has Ian ceased to be again? Yep. I'm gonna roll his attack for him. He does hit. He cuts him down. Yeah, I would say that worked. So, at which point, the girl must make a life and death roll. Paulette, it's back to you. Now, I have a, th I have a couple things I could do here, and I'm going to put it up to uh, group consensus. Should I heal the woman, or should I smash a kobold in the face? Smash the kobold, Lucas will save the woman. Actually, that's a point you do have cure wounds. She's Colette... dead, not a kobold. Actually, she just met, she just passed a life or death saving throw. It's hard to tell what's going on because she's uh, underfoot. Lucas I... is a keen observer of women and notices her pulse is still racing. She must still know he's there. You are definitely uh, <laughs> spending your time looking at her chest heave up and down. <laughs> oh God! Uh, you know in well. all seriousness, can Colette make a check to see how uh, how dead she is? You may make a perception. Nice. Um, in her current state, she is dying. Left untended, you couldn't really tell. It will definitely be over in three rounds or so. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. Okay, so I think I'll do her more good by by smashing the kobold that would inevitably attack her once she got up. There's a unconscious one to your left. You can move away from him freely. To your right, there's an unconscious one and a conscious one going to smash the conscious one right in the kisser. That is a hit. Nice. A powerful hit as your attack comes down, hitting him in his spine. He's not quite finished. I'll take it. So, uh, Lucas, it's your action. You can see Stephen Blaze coming into combat. Now he's swift and the children are safe. Um, could you move me up to the female on the floor, please. Reaching out with one powerful hand, I will lay it upon her shoulder. <laughs> um, um, and I will heal her. You bring your hand between Enoch's legs. I mean, when I first put my foot on a woman's neck, I didn't imagine this happening. You whisper something quietly and yeah, you immediately see... Yeah, I've got a little, see... little incantation here. You immediately just see her. her eyes start to flicker open. As she does so, her hand grip the staff once again. And uh, she begins to get up to fight. I've still got a bonus action yet. If you wish to take it, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give her an inspiration dice because she is too squishy for my liking already. So I'm going to look her in the eye and sing in a soothing voice. Uh, Upon my life and within my heart, invoke this spell to do its part. For told by ancestral lore of old, when called upon and rightly hold. I urge you now a breath to take. Now open your eyes and peaceful wake. Lucas, I would clap, but it, but you wouldn't hear it because it would because that would mean uh, letting go of my talk key. I'll do it for you. Thank you. Head on. It's your action. Feel free to just swing around and take this thing's head off. Right. Well, I'll engage this this guy then. That's certainly a hit, and he's on one hit point. You easily step forward and thrust your blade into his chest. He collapses, the last of the conscious. Now it's up to you guys. There's two more combatants. They are, however, asleep. Capture one. We can find out about this attack. Blaze simply slays the first one he sees. You have another one if you wish to capture it. Yeah, I'd like to restrain him. I'll assist. You're currently out of initiative for the moment. Okay. If he escapes, I'm totally saying that, you know, not my fault. He has one chance. The woman moves over to her husband and her children. Is everyone all right? Uh, I'm fine, but the people, what has happened here? Stephen looks up to the sky. This is a dragon here in Greenest. By the gods, we must do something. As, as she's helping Lucas, Colette pipes up, well, I think that's what we're about to find out. After less than a minute, he does come to conscious. Uh, I would like to speak in Draconic. Take a grapple with me. Can I assist so as to give him an advantage? You can, yes. Lucas might want to slap this guy. If he doesn't listen to him, so it'd probably be better for you to roll. I'll assist you. That's actually a good idea. I have 
one more point of strength than you do. <laughs> that was totally not what I thought, but yes. <laughs> Great idea, anyway. Lucas will have his rapier ready. Yeah, he does go for a run. Paulette goes to grab him, but he slips out of her grasp. Can I stab him in the head? You may attempt attack of opportunity. So may you, Paulette. Can I get a attack of opportunity as well? He just out of five foot from you, Adot. Son of a gun. Nineteen. Nineteen is a hit. And nine uh, damage. As he starts to run, you cut him down. A pity to see one so small fall so quickly. And I'll, I'll pull my blade out and clean it off without any preamble. He was one well, day away from retirement. Well, so uh, much for that plan. Good riddance you hear from the man to the far left as he starts to limp forward. Krieg turns back like, towards them and, and just uh, growls, What's happened here? When, when did this happen? How could this happen? How? I have no damn idea. All I care is that it's happening. Says the uh, man as he walks towards you. You have my thanks as you've saved my life and the life of my wife, Lynn and Swift. My name's Puss. And uh, you saved myself and my children. But please, we need your assistance to get to safety. The mayor's mansion is to the left. Do not worry, we will get you there safe and sound. Indeed. I pipes up. Ah yes, governor. Strange fellow. But his... his operation is fortified. We should go there. Worry not, I... you will all live to hear another song, another tale of joy. By, pe by Pedro's blessing, we will keep you. Can I take this opportunity to check the kobolds for any uh, valuables? As you do! <laughs> they have no coinage on them at this point. They had, however, started to rob from the houses next to them, but all of that material is kind of lying around the steps, taken out before they start attacking. We will waste no time, we must get to the mayor's. Creed kind of starts wandering forward, muttering to himself, no, no, this is wrong, no, this is wrong, this cannot be. Uh, Lucas will follow in tow. Actually, Lucas is going to take the rear, and uh, he's going to play a soothing melody as we walk, just to sort of calm the children and perhaps the other individuals in the city, and they'll act as a sort of beacon for any other survivors to follow. As he plays, Krieg just sort of starts taking deep breaths to try and calm himself, just going... <sighs> Blaze points forward where you can see a huge manor. Outside of it is a very well-made stone wall that goes all the way around it with a gate. You can just about make out two very hefty looking guards in front of the manor, shutting the very thick iron fence in front of it. We must take them to safety. Agreed. They're shutting the gates as we speak, right? Yes, but that could just be in general from the attack. They might not have spotted us as well. Okay, Krieg starts running to on, on the door, bellowing at the top of his lungs. Hold! Hold! Hold the door! Wait. Lucas will follow up the rear unless he spots these guards disobeying the, not order, but request to open the door, in which case he'll storm forward as well. Also following. Steven stays at the back just in case someone comes from the rear. There's a distinct possibility as you can hear fighting all around you. You can see a huge kind of ray of frost fire down from the heavens. Uh, as a big black figure comes by. Father? <laughs> <laughs> right, where's this figure? It's in kind of the heavens. Oh. It's above the clouds. When I write of it, it will be nothing but a salamander. Can I encourage uh, these guys to get a shuffle onto the mayor's house? What is your order? It all depends going. on how they're... Are they, are they actually keeping the gates open as we approach, or are they still trying to close it? They are closing them currently. Uh, if they have not... If they, if they notice us, do they, do they look like they've spotted us? They took no look outside. They simply heard the chaos, see the smoke, and they started closing. Lucas will strum out a disconnect chord on his lute. Um, sort of a sharp and un, unyielding sound uh, in an attempt to sort of garner their attention. I'm just going to be continuously moving forward as far as I can. Right. You said Blaze is taking the rear, yeah? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. I'll take to the front then. As you guys move up slightly from the houses to the right of you, you see 
huge number of cobalt ransacking, and they burst out from that area. What you didn't expect to see, you see humanoid bandits arrive. They come out from the next house. They're wearing red bands, similar to that of the known bandits in Delver. Um, however, they are seemingly working alongside Cobalt. With my knowledge of dragons and their elk, would I know of this sort of anything about them? Are they matching any sort of symbols, insignias, or colorations of known dragons? You've heard of the Red Band Clan. They are not local to this area, and um, there is no reason, unless they were hired, which is something unusual for Cobalt to do, for them to even be here. Nevertheless, they are raiding and taking supplies. As they come out, they put their sights on you, uh, they sort of position themselves between yourselves and the manor. One of them looks forward and says, Ah! Seeing we find some folly, bring Erd. And then we may roll initiatives. Okay. Okay, first to go is Karen. You were ready for combat. Attack bloke in front of me. That is a hit. You simply slice his face in two. Can I use the excess blood to blind the other cobalt? You can certainly splatter the blood around, but in terms of game effect, it does nothing except make you look like a maniac. Uh, your action. Okay. I'm good. Uh, Kree's gonna let out a roar, charge forward, and then punch... Let's see, who am I gonna go for first? I'll punch this dude first. That is a hit. Okay. Brutal Orc Fists! Five damage is just enough knock his lights out. Okay, and then for my bonus action... Oh, uh, that is definitely nice. a hit. At least you know, no matter what you roll, you're gonna kill him. Yes, your back elbow breaks his nose. He collapses. Uh, I Lucas. love your character already, Jonan. <laughs> Rightio, I'm going to start off by casually walking between those cobbles. I'll stand there, um, and with my rapier still drawn, I'm going to cut into the back one on the right-hand side there. That is a hit. Pretty sure they did. Wait, uh, right. Uh, again, I'd like to do it with complete and utter nonchalance as if the, the destruction of such things are b below me. Casually slice the cobalt, and as it drops, you kind of look a bit... Oh, sorry. Just uh, like slicing cheese. Sorry, I wanted to kill the one at the back there so I could continue walking towards the bandits. You'd still provoke an attack of opportunity from the one next to you, if you were to walk forward, that is. You could kill that one, but uh, this one here would still be able to attack you. Yep, go for it. Matt me, bro. <laughs> that was not a good idea. That's oh, dear. That's, that's fine. <laughs> So just not to let me go, oh, I have nothing, no problems here, oh! <laughs> Lucas is an actor, he can pretend it didn't know. Save me from the wee turtles! <laughs> wee turtles. turtles. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Lucas is gonna grimace slightly make a, face. Uh, make a buff roll to hide the pain. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, you, you, get, uh, you kind of, you kind of, kind of keep your mouth steady as the pain shoots through your arm. You are scratched. Um, the band is not playing it, and they kind of smile and they look to their right and they say, "Fish him off, bird." At which point, Edok, it's your action. What will suggest? Stay back here, and we can hold them off with our crossbows. Can I uh, use one of my javelins and throw it the uh, closest kobold to uh, this one? Yes, you can. God damn it. Oh. <laughs> Regan, Lucas, do you roll a d100? And I will roll one myself. The next guy. As you go to throw your javelin, without kind of looking down on your feet, positioning, you kind of slip on this rock, and your throw just did not quite get the angle you want it to. It lands just in front of the cobalt rather than on it. Yay, I didn't kill all my party members. 
I was about to say, with your strength, that could have ended horribly. Someone could have lost an eye. I'm actually yep. kind of wishing that was at level 3 because I just need one more level to learn uh, deflect projectiles. Colette. First, Colette will mutter, oh, oh sweet pillow. And, uh, ready, actually, crossbow or sacred flame? Let's go with the crossbow, actually, because it'll do more damage if it lands. That is a hit. And that's at the one that Edok just spectacularly missed. Yes. Well, he should be a bit scared now that a javelin's, like, right in front of him. Be like, <laughs> oh, these, these guys mean business. <laughs> As he looks down at the javelin, oh, goes into his forehead and sends him flying. At this point, the bandits start moving in. As they do, breaking out from the building just next to them is a winged kobold. It's flying 60 feet in the air. It goes to drop a rock onto your head. That is a miss. You get a kind of snigger from the bandits. Better try harder, say to themselves. And then they move in. One of them attack you, Lucas. Bring it! He missed. And Lucas just gonna push his sword aside. One of them attack you, Greek. Okay. Ouch. That uh, it hits. I mean, luckily you're an orc, so you're meaty. One of them misses him. The last of them, he is muttering something to himself. You took three points. Wow, he failed miserably on delivery. The kobold uh, as well, and because it has an ally next to it, it has advantage. So it hit with an 18. And that deals you five points. It would then go to Kaven, who's not here right now, so we go to... Oh good! The, uh, the half work gets the counterattack. Okay, so I attack this guy in front of me. That is a hit. Okay. He takes the boot, still standing. Okay, and then, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to use my bonus attack against the Cobalt, so... Yes. Bitch slap of doom. That's a hit. Bitch slap of doom indeed. Your initial attack on the bandit didn't drop him, but with a spinning kick, uh, you take up the kobold. Nice. Lucas, you are up. Uh, does the kobold appear to have any more rocks in its talons or feet or arms? It, yeah, it's got a number in a kind of satchel on its uh, In which case, I'm going to whisper some discordant whispers at it. That's a wisdom save. They are terrible at that. I hope so, because it'd like to be nice to land this. Good choice! Good choice, Lucas! <laughs> Ten. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, it takes seven psychic damage and has to flee as far away from me as it can. You kind of say that and it grasps its head and it shrieks. It's certainly off foot. On its turn, it will be moving away. My bonus action, I'm going to give... <sighs> Our resident orcish monk, a inspiration die. I will also take my time to turn to the bandits. Tell me, is the coin really worth dying for? Words are getting to them. Edok, action. Mm -hmm. Put myself uh, in melee range over here and I'll uh, have a crack at this guy. That is a hit. Hooray! Nice. Once uh, Edok is done obliterating someone, or not. Having previously been winded in the chest by the attack from uh, the monk, that back swing into his shoulder is just enough to take down the bandit. Nice. I'm back. Karen, it's your action. I'm gonna swing at the bloke in front of me. You go for your swing, but he steps back easily. Full action. Okay, uh, after Lucas's amazing showing, I think Colette will take a quick glance behind her to make sure that the family and Stephen Blaze are still okay. When you look behind, it looks like Lynn and Swift are gonna start moving up. Colette cleans the safety of the group behind her and moves forward into the action, lending the group her amazing armor class. And she uh, will attempt to light the winged kobold on fire. Sweet. Having previously been just brought down verbally 
by the barge, it's in a prime position for your holy fire. Snap. And with that, uh, the creature already shrieking and dabbing its head, it's once more and a, a terrified scream, and it wings lifelessly and it flops to the ground. Fine work, to, my lady. Yeah, then goes to them. They will attempt to flee. The front bandit looks on towards the dead flying kobold. He was previously muttering to himself, now he, he's audible what he's saying, and he says, Bird, treated. And then he starts to back away. And Lucas, you can make an attack opportunity, so can you, Karen. I will not have oh. Is that a promise? It's a hit, Gordon. You certainly wound him as you slice your blade towards his leg. He does, however, still make partially away from you. Assuming you are continuing on initiatives at this point, it will go back, Karen. You charge mate in the back and stab him again. You can reach Let him. Let them flee, the battle's down. over. I don't think he's listening. It is a miss. You screw the back of his leather armor as he's running away from you. Take your action. I'm gonna start running onto the gate, and I'm gonna yell at the, t at the top of my old lungs. The battle's over! For the love of everything sacred, let us in! Make a persuasion. A persuasion, okay. That's just a standard d20 because my charisma is terrible. Well, they rolled a six. You win! At such, you can see a very bloody guard looking through the gate as he kind of opens it partially. He then sees from his perspective, at least looking forward, they can't see any bandit. They're running. They start from the gate. Ugh. He then turns back to the, the others and then goes, Now! Come on! Hurry! We then go to Lucas. Lucas is going to move back and see if he can get behind Stephen Blaze to make sure no one sneaks up and tries to dispatch the children and civilians before we get inside. Head up. Um, well, I'll take this time to retrieve my javelin and before that winged kobold evaporates, I'd like to slice its wing off and take it as a trophy. Certainly a gory process. Make Collect a, pails. Make a austerity <laughs> roll. To begin to carve the wing, as you pull it away, it just breaks in all manner of places. And you certainly have a lot of blood you've protected on your clothing. Other than that, nothing usable, or at least display worthy. Well, I've got another wing to try on. Colette, your action. Colette will once again go another stage paler and back toward the group she's been protecting. To the tune of... The, the gate's open, come on. Hey, when you may make an attack if you wish. You've got your turn, and then you'll have an attack opportunity if he buys that and runs away again. That is unfortunately a miss. Again, your blade cuts a strap on the back of his armor, but he remains intact. In their turn, he does move again. You may make an attack opportunity. That is a hit. That's bad. I'm going to say, time to rid the world of one more bandit. With that chirpy yet chilling last words, you may do damage. I do enjoy our good characters. Okay. And running away is sliced in the back of the neck. You are now out of initiative. No, I'm happy. Is there anything on this bandit? There is 30 gold pieces. But oh. it is certainly stolen goods from the town's people. Sleight of hand and try to put it in my pocket. Lucas is definitely not going to be paying attention. He's just going to be ushering people forward. Lucky you, the cleric was behind the building when that happened. No one was really able to see what you were doing. The gate opened. In front of which two heavily armed, kind of green looking guards, and a very strange looking man. He looks about sickly, his hair is kind of half white, he's dressed very kind of elegantly and kind of pompously with a big free section on the front of his hair. And he seems very dispossessed about this whole situation. Creeped up and then goes, Help us! We have wounded! We need shelter! Without saying anything, Stephen Blaze and civilians kind of force their way inside. Lucas is going to turn about. I am going to look for more survivors. There might be more stuck within the city. Stephen turns to you. He says, We have bigger folly, boy. If the keep falls, the whole, the whole town is lost. Creed growls to himself. Uh, oh, for a moment, as he's thinking about it, he goes, You're right. Come on, let's go. And then walks inside. 
Colette does not look happy about leaving survivors behind, but sees the point and follows the half-orc. Lucas stares forlornly into the city before following. I'm going to tr uh, I'm going to try to stealth and find one person. First roll a straight d20, no bonuses, and then make an investigation. Did I get that second wing? You may make your roll. It was close. You go to the hut nearby. There is a an inside. Fortunately, you are able to avoid all combat, and you see a familiar face powering inside. A familiar face? He looks at you and says, Oh gods, it is Finn. <laughs> hey, Finn? Dad. Where is she? Where is your wife? Oh my Where god, are you kidding me? <laughs> Anara went to fight. I haven't seen her. Go to the keep. Where did she go? Which direction? Gods, I can't keep a handle of that woman. I imagine she would have gone to the fort. The keep. Been to a keep we head. Follow me, Finn. And yeah, I'll just head straight back. As Lucas shows up with another survivor, Colette actually looks a little surprised and, and remarks, hmm, Perhaps I misjudged you, bud. Many do. Not just a pretty face, keen mind, strong body. <laughs> I'm heroic, too. And modest. First and foremost among my abilities. As you all kind of pile in, the mayor seems like moved for this entire experience. Eventually, Stephen Blaze introduces him as Tarbor Nighthill, the governor of this town. He simply replies to you, Heroes, I knew you'd come. Uh, we don't deserve that name. Barely survived the first assault. Speak for yourself. Did I'd pretty well, received but a, but a scratch. One of the guards come towards you as you're speaking. It looks like the cult to me. They've been attacking villagers around the kingdom. Would the group have to roll a perception check to notice the uh, sudden change in Colette's interest at hearing about the cult? Just roll a deception if you're trying to hide it. If not, then it's just easily observed. Actually, I'm really not, so it's easily observed. You've heard of them. This cult. More, more than heard of them, I'm afraid. It's a long story, and my and might in fact be best saved to when we're done here. Well, I admire a good story, so I can wait. I'm gonna take a short break. After hearing about the occult, Krieg sort of buries his face in his hands and going, Oh no, why here, why now? To which Colette looks your way sympathetically. Heard of them too, then? I've had run it through them in the past. They're memories I'd rather not dwell on. Colette looks intrigued. It doesn't seem as though she's encountered them personally, but they are important to her. And Lucas, meanwhile, will be striking up a song to try to soothe the civilians who are no doubt 
all about the place of war and concern. You have certainly harmed them. On the other side, Blaze walks up to Governor a night hill. There's uh, the sewer. Night Hill nods in agreement. He turns back to you and says, There's a direct route keep. Secret route from under here. But luckily, it's not been travelled by the We can find our way to the keep and put them off from there. I reckon he knows something. Night Hill. Yeah, the guy in charge. He says, We have, we have looked into this, sir. Uh, good friend of mine, Leo Sin has investigated but we did not expect to attack at this creek suddenly he starts walking forward to Nitel and said Leosin where is he is he alright he has not returned Krieg then just buries his head in his hand and goes no 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 calm down Go. he has not returned does not mean he's dead let's make Go. haste to keep Leosin is a strong man Dead. Expect. He is. He is indeed. Okay. Okay. Let's get out of here to the sewers. Yes. Let, let's be going. Who's coming with us? Blaze, will you stay and protect the innocents? Quite right. I suggest you ensure the path is clear and we shall take the civilians. I'm in your debt. Accepted. As around the back of the manor is a small, kind of dead like house. You get into it, there is a covered section of the ground. Once you remove that, it leads down. What are you doing for light sources? It's pitch black in here. Theoretically, I can make my mace into a torch with the light spell. That is wonderful. I think I'll just do that and we can go ahead as is. And I will take the lead as the person with the torch and the highest AC, I'm pretty sure. Before that though, can I actually, I want to stay ahead of his light and stealth. I want to sort of make use of the darkness, see if I can sneak up on some stuff or scout ahead. In the far extents of your vision, you can see huge number of rats start to come out from the drain in front of you. And I will have to ask you to roll initiative. Corlette, you are first to go. You can see from the drain in front of you, rats have started to swarm out. Okay, and I take it they're just moving as a giant conglomerate. Yeah, they're moving as big, big clumps. Several in each clump. Okay, I'm going to light it on fire. Why is it always got to be rats? <laughs> they do not get out of the way. Yeah. Fuck yeah! That's it. Burn! Your fire comes in, exploding several of the number. There is still, however, enough of them to swarm. Careful going, lads. Freak, your action. I'm going to move to around here, and I'm gonna hold my action until they try to come past me. Lucas. I will draw my rapier and attack the swarm that was just blown up. Uh, 17. That is certainly a hit. 6 damage. You're stabbing in and you're slashing, the sheer number of them makes it difficult to point one to attack. Nevertheless, you do so. Haven. I'm also going to go up and attack. Careful of their bites, these rats have been known to contain contagions and foul diseases. That is a hit. You certainly give it a good st The uh, issue you're having is that so many of them, you don't be really doing as much damage to the swarm as you think you could. Then goes to them. Two more swarms of rat appear from the drains far ahead. There's more of them. Oh, great. For yourselves, one of the swarms moves here in. One of them you can get an attack on because it's moving past you. Okay, this one, yeah. I'm gonna attack the one on the tried swarming past me. Okay, for this one, since these rats have been uh, difficult to kill, I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna use up one of my two key points to, as a bonus action, make two attack rolls instead. That is a hit. You, you, you're hitting them as they come past. Since there's such a large number of them, you don't think you're making as much as enough on the swarm as you could. Ah. 
Nevertheless, they do move into the spaces of some of your party and make attack rolls. For Lucas, uh, looking at a 14. Uh, no. For Kaywin, you are looking at a 14 again. No. You may take a turn. Hooray. I will, uh, you know, do, do the usual melee. You do hit. Hooray. There's bats all over Lucas. You can kind of brush them off with your blade. That was a particularly strong hit. When it comes to damaging them, since you're doing one attack, you're kind of not damaging the entire swarm as such. You're just kind of killing a rat here and there. It's not getting the desired effect. You certainly feel like you did a lot of damage, but not to all of them. Oh, wow. Well, sadly, I don't really have any AoE attacks. Right. More sacred fire! Okay, they fell. Better than just whacking at them. There's certainly a very large amount of singed rat. Up. I um, growl frustration and go, goes, Anyone have any bright ideas before continuing to attack the rats on... I'm gonna try and see if I can get some off um, Karen here, so... Certainly. And... Bonus action to attack again, because I'm guessing they're still not dead. They are still swarming around him, yes. You finally pick the last rat off. <sighs> well, at least we know they can be killed. Lucas. I'm just going to hold my turn for now. Karen, you are actually. I'm going to hold my attack, but with I'm going to try to put a bit of oiled cloth around a crossbow bolt and get my crossbow ready. So are you going to attempt to light a bolt on fire? Yes. Okay, you can do that. Make a, I guess, a dexterity roll. Oh good, a thing you're you're excellent at. Don't roll low. You set your crossbow on fire. I was about <laughs> to say. You certainly have made a small amount of flames produced on your crossbow. What are you going to do with it? Because you kind of have a bout a round or two before your crossbow becomes a flame itself. Holding the action. So you're holding your action till when they come towards you? Yeah. At which I'm point they do this. come towards you. That I is a hit. Know. You may add free fire damage. Kaylin has just given me an idea. Probably the same one I've got. What are you doing, Luke's? Uh, yeah, I'm going to use my action to disengage and just leave these rats in my dust. Kaylin, the rats. And again! <laughs> That is a 19. You take points of piercing damage. Their tiny mouths start to bite all about you. <laughs> That's not good. And then we go back to Colette. Okay, I think it might be prudent to get the rats off my traveling companion. First, though, if I move up, what do I see? Ahead of you, there are more rat swarms. I'm thinking of a plan here. It, does it involve fire? Yes, it does. Specifically, a blanket on fire, but I'm not sure if it'd do if that would uh, do much. Things like blankets and cloth. If you flint light them on fire or what have you, they'll only really burn for about a round, and it'll be very minor amount of damage. In that case, I'm just going to uh, see if I can blast the rats off of Karen. They rolled a natural one. Nice. They go ooh, pretty light and jump into the fire. That is enough to hinge the uh, small amounts of rat were on him to death. Nice. So I believe it's my turn now. I'm, I'm going to stand here and hold my action until one of them comes past me. Make a dex roll. I was just saying, with the button not held down, don't step on the grate. That's amazing. <laughs> Good. <laughs> You feel a bit of weakness under your feet for just a moment. I will move slightly this way and then, yeah, hold my action until they come um, either past me or towards me. Lucas. With my knowledge of sewers, <laughs> do I feel as if the grates might contain some form of flammable gas in which we could purge the under sewers with flames? It's likely they do contain methane, but nothing to the extent where they would light the entire section on fire. <laughs> Also, we might explode ourselves. 
That's fine. It's never it's, stopped us we're before. We're fine up here. <laughs> uh, right, I'm going to shout some vicious mockery at the rats. I'm just going to shout your very existence as uh, an insult. You can just imagine being like, squeak, 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 get fucked. Squeak, squeak, like, squeak. I like to imagine one rat at least <laughs> is feeling a little bit depressed. I am done. Two. I'm going to attempt the same, set the bolt on fire and fire it into one of the rats. Okay, it was a bit too generous earlier. When you do a piece of stuff and you light it on fire around, it's not designed to work that way, so you would find a disadvantage. Okay, I'm going to set a torch on fire and throw it at the rats. That would be an improvised weapon, so you'd lose your proficiency if that's alright. That's fine. If you do so, it only kind of serves to burn creeks from your direction. <laughs> it goes to them. Creed, you may attack the swarm that moves into you. The other swarm moves to its next nearest target, which is Kitten. Okay. Nice. Creed, you may do damage. And Hawks are getting additional dice physical damage as well. You pretty much have a kind of Seth Rollins curb stomp here. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, you thin them out round about half that spectacular curb stomp, squishing several rats as you do so. Okay, and bonus action is the attack. That also hit. And roll again. I think it should be Krieg Ratsbane from now on. <laughs> and so you'd smash some more as you kind of swipe away with a karate chop. So for Karen, 14. And for Krieg, uh, 19. Oh dear. Brutal. You take. Six damage from all of the many elves that are kind of less willing to bite you after you smashed their uh, friends and family to bits. Paulette, it's your action. You know the drill. The swarm on Krieg can make a deck save. It's very fit at this point. It's enough to dispatch them in the fiery holy justice. Sweet. Thank you. Lucas, your action. I am just going to launch some more vicious insults at them. Ten. That is a fail. I'm just gonna shout your mother is a half orc. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> I was not insulting you this time. <laughs> they take one damage. Disadvantage on their next attack. Despite the fact that they're a different species, you kind of hear a kind of sad, inquisitive. <laughs> <laughs> That's right! You heard me! <laughs> Kaylin, your action. Back to trying to kill him. That is a hit. I think this one is unwounded. It took one damage. You slice into them, they're kind of all around you, so you frantically attack them. Now they will attack you back at disadvantage. Completely uh -huh. missing. Uh... No action. <laughs> Well, again, as I lack any AoE, I'm just going to have to uh, be as delicate as I can with a great axe. A surgeon's precision with a great axe. Stranger things have happened. That is a hit. Clearly! Fortunately, there was such a large mass of rats on him, it was very difficult to not hit them. You slide a large number of them off of him. Pull it. Time to light more on fire. They fail. That's more like it. There's a few left on him, they're kind of... They're kind of just biting it back because of this he gets your action. Time to initiate Operation Monk Stop. <laughs> Krieg, he's kind of kept up with a lot of blood and moan, he just goes, That is it. I have had it with these motherfucking rats in this motherfucking sewer and turns around <laughs> to start attacking me. <laughs> <laughs> the best! <laughs> and rolls a one. Oh, Are you? Oh, oh my close. god, that was close. <laughs> Do your damage. <laughs> As you say that, you pick up one of the remaining rats and another of the rats, and you just smash them against each other like a pair of symbols. <laughs> and it's enough to not only kill the rats, but persuade the rest of them, I should say, to retreat. <laughs> Just reminds me of Stone Cold with his beers where he'd smash them together. 
the it's, Texas rattle. Uh, Colette is somewhere between impressed and horrified, and will give Krieg, Krieg two of her uh, cure wounds. <sighs> Thank you. As you turn to heal him, all of the commotion has drawn interest, and at the far end of the sewer out of sight, you can kind of hear what sounds like a roar, a very kind of lizard-like roar. As it echoes down. Spend rolled for cure wounds, but I and I got eight HP back. Cure wounds for myself as well. I would like to collect some rats to make some rat fur gloves for later. Maybe a hat. Edok, Heron, and Creed, and Corlett, you, you may make perception check. Okay. Corlett and Edok, you can see from the northern direction large lizard-like creatures. Kind of stalking on the walls, very efficiently and very silently coming towards you. They appear to be draped of some sort. Their composition is thin and less bulky. They look very fast and very nimble. They're gonna hurt. Likewise, at the far end of the corridor, you can see to your right, you can see confidently coming towards you a series of six kobolds behind them two men in black clothing black kind of cultist garbs behind them as it stands you are menacingly approached by drakes right in front of you and a small amount of kobolds but led some very dark clothed cultist members to your right as they approach you menacingly draw your weapons for the attack and that's it for Heroes of Might and Valor, and we'll see you next time.